Our story takes place during a pivotal moment in the history of the Israelites. They had escaped the brutal slavery of Egypt under Moses' leadership, guided by God's own hand. Imagine the relief, the joy, the hope that must have filled their hearts as they made their way through the wilderness. God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of their own where they could live in freedom and prosperity. They had witnessed incredible miracles, the parting of the Red Sea, the provision of manna from heaven, and the constant presence of God in the pillar of cloud and fire. Their journey, however, was far from easy. The wilderness was a harsh and unforgiving place. They faced hunger, thirst, and attacks from their enemies, yet through it all, God remained faithful. He provided for their needs and protected them. Moses, chosen by God, became their leader, their guide, their mediator, he stood before God, receiving his laws and instructions, relaying them to the people. Aaron, his brother, served as the high priest, leading the people in worship and offering sacrifices to God. Despite these miraculous experiences and God's constant provision, a spirit of discontent began to grow among some Israelites. The challenges of the desert, the uncertainty of their future, and the longing for the comforts they had left behind in Egypt began to take root in their hearts. They began to question Moses' leadership, grumbling about the hardships they faced. They forgot momentarily the miracle of their deliverance and the promise of the land that awaited them. This growing dissatisfaction set the stage for a dramatic event that would test the faith of the Israelites and demonstrate the power and justice of God. It is within this context that the story of Korah's rebellion unfolds a stark reminder of the dangers of pride, envy, and rebellion against God's chosen authority. The Israelites had been journeying through the wilderness for some time. The daily grind of survival replaced their initial euphoria. The desert tested their faith and resilience. Seeds of discontent began to sprout. Whispers of doubt circulated through the camp. They questioned Moses and Aaron's leadership. They envied their roles, forgetting God appointed them. Their discontent was a deeper spiritual crisis. Moses and Aaron were deeply troubled. They prayed for God's guidance and intervention. Among the Israelites, a man named Korah from the tribe of Levi began to harbor a dangerous ambition. Korah was a Levite chosen by God to assist the priests in the tabernacle. He looked upon Moses and Aaron with envy, questioning their authority. Korah began to gather followers, whispering doubts and accusations. He appealed to their pride and discontent, questioning Moses' leadership. Many were swayed by his arguments, resonating with Korah's accusations. 250 prominent men joined Korah's rebellion. Together, they formed a formidable opposition to Moses and Aaron. The stage was set for a dramatic confrontation, testing leadership and faith. Korah and his followers approached Moses and Aaron with confidence and righteous indignation. They stood before the tent of meeting, faces a mixture of defiance and accusation. You have gone too far, Moses, Korah declared loudly. You have set yourself above the congregation of the Lord. Are we not all holy, chosen by God? You claim to lead us to a land of milk and honey, yet we wander in this wilderness. We have had enough of your leadership. Aaron stood silently by Moses' side. Moses, though deeply hurt, maintained his composure. With a heavy heart, Moses fell face down before the Lord. As he prayed, a hush fell over the crowd. A profound silence fell upon the assembly as Moses prostrated himself before the Lord. The weight of the accusation, the audacity of the challenge hung heavy in the air. The Israelites held their breath, their eyes fixed on Moses, a mixture of anticipation and fear etched on their faces. Would God remain silent in the face of such open rebellion? Suddenly the silence was broken. A voice, powerful and unmistakable, boomed from within the tent of meeting. It was the voice of God, filled with righteous anger and unwavering authority. The ground trembled beneath their feet as if the very earth itself recoiled at the sound of his displeasure. God spoke directly to Moses and Aaron, his words echoing with the weight of divine judgment. Separate yourselves from this assembly, he commanded, that I may consume them in a moment. The words hung in the air, sharp as a sword, leaving no room for doubt or misinterpretation. God would not tolerate this rebellion. He would act swiftly and decisively to demonstrate his power and uphold his chosen leaders. Moses and Aaron, 
though shaken by the pronouncements of God's wrath, knew that his judgment was just. They had witnessed firsthand the destructive consequences of rebellion against God. They understood that this was not merely a matter of personal offense. This was a direct challenge to God's authority, a sin with far-reaching consequences. A murmur rippled through the crowd as the weight of God's words sank in. Some, their hearts gripped by fear, began to step back, distancing themselves from Korah and his followers. Others, hardened by their pride and anger, stood their ground, their faces defiant, their hearts unmoved by the impending judgment. The stage was set. The line between obedience and rebellion had been drawn. The moment of decision had arrived. Would the Israelites heed the warning and turn back to God and his chosen leaders, or would they face the consequences of their defiance and experience the full force of his wrath? With heavy hearts but unwavering resolve, Moses and Aaron addressed the assembly. Their voices, though tinged with sorrow, rang out with the authority vested in them by God. This is what the Lord has spoken, Moses declared, his words echoing across the hushed gathering. Get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Do not touch anything belonging to them or you will be swept away because of all their sins. The command was clear, the choice stark. God in his mercy was providing a way of escape for those whose hearts remained faithful. He was drawing a clear line between the rebellious and the obedient, offering a final opportunity for repentance and reconciliation. As Moses spoke, a wave of movement swept through the crowd. Families, their faces etched with fear and uncertainty, began to gather their meager belongings and move away from the tents of Korah, Dothan, and Abiram. They had witnessed the power of God. They had heard his warning. Fear, but also a flicker of faith, spurred them to action. They chose obedience, even in the face of uncertainty, trusting in God's promise of protection. Yet Korah and his followers remained defiant, blinded by their pride and consumed by their ambition. They refused to acknowledge the gravity of their sin. They had convinced themselves that they were in the right, that Moses and Aaron were the usurpers, not them. They had allowed their hearts to harden against God, their ears deaf to his warnings. As the faithful Israelites distanced themselves from the rebels, the division within the camp became glaringly apparent. On one side stood Moses and Aaron, surrounded by those who remained faithful to God and his chosen leaders. On the other side stood Korah and his followers, their numbers dwindling, their defiance a stark contrast to the growing fear and uncertainty etched on their faces. A hush fell over the assembly as the last of the faithful Israelites moved away from the tents of Korah and his followers. The air crackled with anticipation, the silence broken only by the sound of the desert wind whistling through the tents. All eyes were fixed on Moses, his face a mask of grief and grim determination. Suddenly the earth trembled beneath their feet, a low rumble like the growl of a slumbering giant shook the ground, sending tremors through the camp. The Israelites cried out in fear as the very earth seemed to convulse around them. Dust billowed into the air as cracks like jagged wounds snaked across the ground, spreading out from where Korah and his followers stood, their defiance now replaced by a primal terror. Then, with a roar that seemed to split the heavens, the earth opened up beneath the feet of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. A gaping chasm, dark and bottomless, yawned open, swallowing them whole before they could even cry out. Their cries of terror died in their throats as the earth closed over them, burying them alive in its depths. The spectacle of divine judgment struck terror into the hearts of the Israelites. They watched in horrified fascination as the earth claimed the rebels, their screams echoing in their ears long after they had disappeared from sight. The ground continued to tremble, as if the very earth itself recoiled from the touch of the wicked. This was no ordinary earthquake. This was the hand of God, moving with terrible swiftness and power, demonstrating his justice and his wrath against those who dared to rebel against his chosen leaders. The Israelites, both the faithful and the doubtful, were left in no doubt as to the consequences of defying the Almighty. The earth trembled, swallowing Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and their followers. The Israelites watched in horror as the ground closed, a reminder of God's swift judgment. Smoke rose from the chasm, a stark reminder of God's judgment. Moses instructed the Israelites to bring fire pans as a test of obedience.
Fear drove the Israelites to obey Moses, gathering fire pans with incense. They stood united, reflecting on God's power and their own fragility. As the last rays of sunlight faded, Moses announced God's judgment. Aaron, with censer in hand, ran among the people, making atonement. He stood between the living and the dead, a symbol of God's mercy. The air crackled with tension as Aaron moved through the camp. The plague stopped and the camp fell silent. The Israelites learned the high cost of rebellion and the importance of obedience. The story of Korah's rebellion is a timeless reminder. It highlights the consequences of envy, pride, and rebellion. Even in judgment, God's mercy provides a way of escape. Korah's rebellion challenged God's authority. Respecting authority is essential for community well-being. Even in disagreement, we must approach leaders with respect. Korah's rebellion was fueled by envy. Envy blinds us to our blessings and spreads discontent. Guarding against envy fosters joy, gratitude, and fellowship. The story of Korah's rebellion is a powerful testament to both God's justice and his mercy. On the one hand, we see the swift and terrible consequences of rebellion against God's ordained authority. Korah and his followers, blinded by pride and envy, faced a swift and decisive judgment, their rebellion crushed by the very earth itself. Yet even in his anger, God demonstrates his boundless love and compassion. He provides a way of escape for those who heed his warnings, who turn away from the rebellion and reaffirm their allegiance to him. He sends Aaron, the high priest, to stand between the living and the dead, offering atonement for the people and halting the plague that threatened to consume them all. This story reminds us that God is both just and merciful, that he hates sin but loves the sinner. He disciplines those he loves, but he also provides a way back to himself for those who repent. His judgment is never arbitrary or capricious. It is always tempered by his mercy and motivated by a desire to restore and redeem. The story of Korah challenges us to live lives characterized by both reverence for God's holiness and gratitude for his mercy. It encourages us to walk humbly before him, to seek his forgiveness when we stray, and to trust in his unfailing love, even in the face of judgment. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't already, come on over and join our family by subscribing to our channel. May God bless you in all your endeavors. Thank you for watching.